Guys, Mr. Bowman here. We are looking at the 2016 Algebraic Concept Exams. Um, again, we're focusing just on the merit questions. Um, let's get into question number six. So question number six, uh, we've been asked to simplify the expression here, making sure we have positive indices. So we're trying to get rid of that negative four power up the top there. So let's start by putting down the expression. So 3b divided by c squared to the power of negative four. First thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be expanding the bracket to make sure that power is impacting both of those. I'll show you what I mean by that. 3b to the power of negative 4 divided by c squared to the power of negative 4. Once we've done that, we're going to get rid of the negative part of this power. We're going to switch them around, make them positive. So the numerator is now going to be c squared to the power of 4. So that was the denominator. Now we have a positive power and the denominator 3b to the power of 4. Now that we've done that, we're going to expand our brackets. So c squared to the power of 4 is c to the power of 8. And this is going to become 3 to the power of 4 times b to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 is 81, so that's going to become c to the power of 8 divided by 81b to the power of 4. And that there is our simplified expression, no negative powers in there now. Okay, we're now looking at question number seven. Um, show that the equations x squared plus x plus, or oh, sorry, minus 56 equals zero are four times the solutions of x squared plus x minus 14. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the answers to this equation, calculate the answers to this equation, and then we've got to check if they are four times bigger. So let's get it. Let's solve the first one. So we've got x squared plus x minus 56 equals zero. You can just jump straight in and use your calculator to find out the answers, but I'm gonna factorize here. So that is gonna be what numbers multiply to negative 56 add to positive one. It's gonna be positive eight and negative seven. It's gonna become x plus eight, x minus seven equals zero. I'm then gonna get my two answers. x one is equal to negative eight, and x two will be equal to positive. 7. We now need to do the same for the next equation. So we've got 4x squared plus x minus 14 equals 0. Because the coefficient's more than 1, you have to use the grouping method. In this case here, I'd highly encourage you to use your graphics calculator in the exam. This time around, we're just going to step through the grouping method anyway. So we've got 4 times negative 14 that is equal to negative 56. So we've now got to think what numbers multiply to negative 56 and add to positive one. And in this case here, it's going to be eight and negative seven. So we're now going to put that into our equations. We're going to go four X squared plus eight X minus seven X minus 14. That should be equal to zero. We can now factorize the first part and the second parts. We've got four 2x, oh gosh, sorry, definitely not a 2x, um, x plus 2 minus, they've got a minus 7 in common, x plus 2 equals to 0. I like seeing the x plus 2s come up twice, it means I didn't make any silly math errors on the way. Um, put that in its final form, x minus 7, x plus 2 should be equal to 0. I'm going to now get to my answers. So this bit here I've got to solve manually, which is a bit annoying. So that's going to be 4x equals 7. The first value there is going to be 7 over 4. The next one here, x2, is going to be equal to negative 2. I've now got to check if we multiply these by 4, will they get these ones up here? So let's go times 4. That there is going to become negative 8. So that's a big tick. That matches x1. And then times this by 4. So the divide by 4 and the times 4 cancel each other out leaving us with 7, and that matches the other answer over here. So that's a big tick as well. And we are now looking at question number 8 um, for this exam, and we've got the quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c has these solutions. Find a possible set of values for a, b, and c. So this question here was actually one of the harder achieved questions I've seen. Um, and it, I suppose it involves starting off with forming a basic quadratic equation. 
in its factorized version, which would have those two answers. So what I did is I just did plus and minus, or the opposite of the two fractions. I then rearranged the brackets just to make it a bit easier for me. So what we can do is that divide by two can just shift over there as a times two, divide by three can shift over there as a times three. So that there would be 2x plus 1, 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. And that makes sense because if you solved this separately, 3x minus 2 equals 0, 3x equals 2, x equals 3 over 2, or sorry, 2 over 3, that gets you to one of the solutions that you're looking at. So there's math mathematically nothing wrong with what we did there. So once we've done that, all we need to do is expand. So we're going to get to, we'll get, get rid of that bracket, 6x squared, which is that times that, minus 4x, that times that, plus 3x, and then we've got minus 2 equals 0. That gets us to 6x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And from there, a is equal to 6, b is equal to negative 1, c is equal to negative 2. We are now up to question number 9. Uh, first of the log questions from the merit stuff. Um, but let's get into it. We asked to simplify that expression. So we got 4 log of u cubed divided by log u. So this question looked a bit challenging to me at first, but the only thing I could see in common was, well, there's a log u on the top and the bottom. Maybe we can cancel something out. So when you think about it that way, if we get rid of this 3, because we're allowed to move a power to the front as multiplication, that'll leave us with just log u by itself. So what we're going to do, that 4 stays there, that's going to be times 3 log u. So that 3 log u is the same as log 3 log u cubed. And that's going to be divided by log u. So the log u's are going to be cancelled out, leaving us with a 3 times 4, and that is simply going to get us to 12. A pretty quick and short answer, but a merit mark and a, a good one to practice. We are now looking at question number 10. So, um, Marie buys a new car for $24,990. The, the car decreases, so the key thing is decreases at 12% each year. Um, we've been given an exponential equation to model the price. When will the car half in value? So we're probably going to start off with just by jotting down that um, model or that equation that they've given to us. Um, so that's r to the power of t. So just to remind us, the p stands for the um, the current value. The a stands for the original value. Just call it odd. That's the rate of change, and the t is time in years. So some of them will be a bit tricky. Um, so the current value. Is going to be half of the purchase price. So that's going to be 24,990 divided by 2. So that's what we're aiming for. The questions told us about that half. The A is the original, so it's going to be 24,990. The rate is 1 minus the 0 0.12. Just don't, just don't add like I did the first time I did this question. Um, it is a decrease, so we're expecting that rate to go down. And T is the number of years. That is what we don't know. That's what we've been asked to find out. Um, we simplify that. The times to 24,990s, they just cancel each other out. So that leaves one half is equal to 0 0.88 of T. And I like it when I see an unknown power because I know straight away I need to use log rules. So I'm going to have to log both sides. So log 0 0.5 is equal to log 0.88t. We're now going to move the unknown power over to the front. So we've got log 0.5 is going to be equal to t log 0.88. t will be equal to 0, oh gosh, log 0.5 divided by log 0.88. And how we got that is that's currently times log 0.88. We move it to the other side as division. And when you put that into your calculator, you're going to get um, 5.422 years. And that they had a 3DP rounding. So somewhere between the fifth year and the sixth year that you own the car, your car will be worth, or this lady's car will be about half the value that she bought it for.
Question number 11 is the last question from this video. We've been asked to rearrange to make x the subject of the given equation. So first thing to note, um, oh, we'll drop down our equation actually for, so we've got x divided by 5, oh sorry, 4x divided by 5 is equal to y, and then in brackets, x plus 3 divided by 2. So the first thing to note, this is going to be pretty messy because we've got two x's along our equation. So that means somehow we're going to have to group them together through addition or subtraction, or maybe we've got to factorize out one of the two x's. Um, and it's also particularly messy because they're both fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply, so we're going to go times 5 times 2. So it's going to be 2 for x is going to be equal to 5yx plus 3. Once I've done that, I'm going to expand both those brackets. 8x is going to be equal to 5xy plus 15. We're making x the subject, so we need the x's on the same side of the equal sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, or well, 15y there, minus 5y minus 5 x, y. That way they're both on the same side. So x or 8x minus 5x, y is equal to 15 y. And we can't add or subtract the x's together because they're not like terms, which means we're stuck with factorizing. So we're going to take out the x, leaving us with 8 minus 5y equals 15 y. This here is multiplication, so we're just going to divide both sides by 8 minus 5y. And that will get x by itself. And the other side, 15y divided by 8 minus 5y. That's our last question for the 2016 exam. Hopefully you found all the videos and all the questions useful. Let's have a look at some more.